Well, I'm not sure that it's, it, I would advise somebody to be a philosopher working on these. If somebody's really interested in consciousness, I think he or she's better off being a, a neuropsychologist or a neuroscientist. Nonetheless, if a philosopher were looking at it, of course, I would advise him or her to be really as deeply embedded with the science. And I, I think some of the areas that they might go is the ones that are not looked at as much. I mean, so questions about the self, I think, are appropriate to come back. I mean, and I think this sort of general question of, what's the kind of um, underlying sort of global basis between what's happening in the mind when it's unconsciously happening and when it's consciously happening. This has obviously been a kind of methodological paradigm that people have used throughout and they continue to use it. And I think that sort of exploring that in, in relationship to the self. I mean, how does that connect with, with the sense of constructing a self? How does the brain construct a self, because I think experiences are not just things that happen in isolation atomistically, they're properties of a conscious self, and I think that's an interesting area to go. The other thing, I have a graduate student now, and he's working on a th dissertation called What Is It Like to Be a Five-Year-Old? So he's coming at it from a developmental psychological perspective, and I think you can't, if you're a philosophy graduate student, you can't go to the old problems that have been talked about. You've got to find a new angle if you're going to have anything useful to say or whether you're going to have a career. So I think doing that, what he's done, namely bringing in developmental psychology, is a good example.